and welcome to my channel. My name is Bronnie Sheffield and today we're going to be talking about what you should put into your showreel, how to make showreels, what are we doing, where are showreels, like everything we need to know. So the first thing I would say about showreels is if you are straight out of college and you've not been able to get any material from your college or if you've not gone to college and you've never been in a show or like you've been in shows you just don't have any footage or good quality footage don't worry like it doesn't really matter like you're literally just trying to show them what you can do go to a beach go to a nice park go in front of a nice graffiti wall go to a basketball court like i think they look really cool so yeah don't put yourself down like just go to any class like learn it drill it like do it to the best of your ability go out and record it with some cool background get your friend maybe to zoom in and out um or like get a tripod a really cheap one the one that i have my camera on right now i'm pretty sure it was like 20 quid and it came with like a bluetooth clicker i got it on amazon it doesn't have to be expensive stuff and like you, it does mean that you can go and do things yourself instead of relying on other people you can just go put yourself out there and honestly i definitely did that in the beginning because i wasn't allowed to get a lot of footage of things that i've been in or they were really bad quality and i literally would just be like right someone record me on the beach like because i lived in Sitges in barcelona so like we were like it was beautiful where we were so like i do split leaps and like kicks on the beach turns on the beach and it was really aesthetically like pretty and it definitely did help me get into a few auditions which leads me on to my other point of learning how to edit the showreel is really good because you may need like a few different showreels if you're someone who's maybe studying musical theatre and you want to show all the shows of musical theatre that you've been in but that doesn't really translate over to a dance showreel where they just don't really care about you singing they just want to see you dance so then maybe having like a few different showreels is better than trying to put it all into one and it just being a bit confusing so yeah having a few different show reels is a really good idea so that you can just really easily be like okay they're looking for more of a lyrical dancer yeah cool send away okay they're looking for a commercial dancer yeah i'm gonna give it a go like doesn't really matter like jazz dancer cool musical theater yeah here's all my musicals that i've been in videoed like done um rather than yeah like a, a full rounded one that's like eight minutes long <laughs> and like they're like where is she actually dancing in this like come on um because they're obviously really really busy people as well like so that's what we need to remember is that like they're doing a job sometimes these jobs come on very short notice so they're under a lot of time pressure so just make it as easy for them as possible okay so go on to youtube and literally just have a search for non-copyright material like non-copyright music and have a like fizzle through it and find a song that you like you know that's not going to get taken down from any sites if you want to put it up on any of your social medias you know that copyright music isn't going to stop you from doing that because that can happen sometimes especially on instagram they take down a lot of dance videos for me anyway just because they say it's like copyrighted material so be careful of that also along with that what can happen is let's say if you are a tap dancer like i am sometimes i'll do tap dancing to very popular music and like that i'll put it in a shower reel and the whole shower reel gets taken down because of that now it doesn't always happen because usually like, the tap is quite loud so like it might not pick up on it if it's like a short clip but to avoid this you could also think of recording some acapella tap dancing and then just add it in to your shower reel so it's really clear that you are hitting the beats with the overlaid music if that makes sense and um, it's just something to think of like obviously if you have really good material or a show that you're in put that in as well i have it in one of my show reels where it's like acapella to the track and then also a, a piece of me on stage where i just took the music and the beats out because i just want them to see that i've actually performed it as well as i tap it in a studio or whatever studio dancing so that's another thing dancing in a studio or getting like class footage I honestly think that is really good because it shows your pickup skills that you like just go in and you nail it and like you are that advanced in your craft that you can go and take all that information and just literally perform it right there and then that's like an intense skill so I think that is really good and valuable to show not every class that you go to you need to record but if you do feel like you're getting on really well in the class and the teacher doesn't mind and you have everyone has an iPhone now so like they're really good quality video cameras just get your friends to record you or prop it up at the side. A lot of people would say like only do it if you're on your own or if you're front and centre. So a way to avoid this or on stage if you're talking about ensemble dancing, you can just highlight yourself in the video. So I have another 
video on my channel about how to spotlight yourself for your show reel, your dance show reel. And it is a bit difficult to like learn how to do all these different things. And there's loads of different apps, like you don't have to use the one that I have used, but there are ways to like single yourself out in a circle so that you don't have to worry about only being able to use video footage where you are front and center on the stage. Because actually it's so valuable to be part of the ensemble and have that kind of a footage from a stage or like not from a stage, like in a classroom and show that you're able to dance in sync with other dancers. That is sometimes most of the time like so much more important than someone who's doing their own thing because when you actually are trying to you know get through rehearsals where they're telling you to do something if you're doing something slightly different it really is quite off-putting to the overall picture so it's important to be able to do exactly what they say and to show that you can do that is so much more valuable than just having clips of yourself where you're doing a click or a layout or some partner work or like when you're on your own so yeah that's also really important to like point out that you can just highlight yourself some people put an arrow but honestly highlighting yourself isn't that hard and there is a video on my channel so go check that out so try and put all the like best quality videos at the beginning just because people generally nowadays only like to focus on good quality video we are very spoiled for like the quality of video footage and social media like platforms that we have so it can be so difficult to focus on bad sound or bad video quality it's just the way our brains are right now so that extends to everyone casting their issues and agents as well you know so what you're going to try and do is put all the best quality footage at the beginning so they're engaged and they know you're good and then if there's something that you really want to put in that you're like i was in this like i was I don't know, on a West End show and I got a video but it's really bad because it was my mom, you know, holding the camera like this, who knows. And you want to put it in because you want to show it, fair, but maybe leave it until at least you've shown them all the good quality footage so you know they, that they've seen all the styles, you can do your quick tricks, like good quality footage at the beginning and then you can put that in so if they're still watching, they're like, oh yeah, I've done that. Remember, they're also going to see all these things on your CV and in your cover letter that you're going to write in your email. They're also going to see photos that you're going to send. So this isn't the only, only, only thing. So don't be like stressing and then kind of self-sabotaging by putting some really bad quality, like 15 seconds in. Someone's watching, I can't watch this. Like, I don't, like, what is that? Like, you know, um, it's a shame, but we are like that. And look, most of the stuff you're gonna perform in most of the time people tell you you can't video it and um, like you're just not allowed or like maybe you just don't have someone in the audience if it's like a once-off performance or something so sometimes the quality footage that you do end up getting can be quite bad but don't worry it's fine it's not the be all and end all we're just trying to show them what we can do maybe it's also just to get into the audition room so you're gonna also have the opportunity to show them in the audition room what you can do so it's all good. So one thing that I like to think of or I like to do right now anyway is at the beginning of my show reel, I'll think of free eye-catching, attention-grabbing things that I could put. So if I have a good kick, if I have like a really nice clean turn, a really cool bit of partner work, if I've done aerial, if I've done fire breathing, if I've done something a little bit different or eye catching or like just aesthetically looks really cool, I want to put like maybe three clips at the beginning and then I'm going to use other clips of nice, cool, fun tricks or whatever throughout the shower to kind of break up choreographies and the different styles. So what I like to do is maybe do three clips, get their attention so that they're definitely going to watch the next bit. Then a good decent chunk of choreography to show that I can actually dance a choreography and I'm not always messing up and it's just like tiny little clips if that makes sense so a bit of choreography then I'm gonna try and think of all the different styles I can do if it's not like a stylized show reel if it's just a general dance show reel I'll do this so then I'll go okay like I've done commercial let's do a bit more jazz then let's show this bit of contemporary let's show this bit on a stage you know, and I'll just literally like play around with it. I'll like put it all in order and I'll watch it and I'll go, actually, I want them to see this first. I think I'd prefer to see that first. And I'll just mess it around with it and like change it around on the editing app, whatever one I'm using. You know yourself, you're done, so you know what looks good. So don't be worrying. Yeah, and just like keep in mind that people's attention span is a bit short sometimes. So everything that you're most proud of or you really want them to see, try and put it towards the beginning of the show reel. Because chances are they're not really gonna watch the whole thing. I would keep it from like around two minutes to three minutes. Yeah, try and sync your dancing to the music. Just 
so it flows it's like whoa that was really cool there's something really satisfying about that i don't know what it is even when i edit like vlogs when i'm doing transitions if it's like a doo -doo -doo, and then i'll like do like some like flashy transition into the next bit um yeah i don't know it was something like very entertaining engaging and just fun to watch as well as like taking in the fact that like you as a performer are very talented in what you're doing so it's just those kind of two things it's just the panel will just i think engage more with that basically and hopefully give you either a job or an audition or like just give you some attention anyway yeah i'd avoid any songs that are really really well known if you're a cast and director and you're looking at a hundred show reels if it's the same song over and over again you might just be like i'm not even watching this i can't listen to that song like, I don't know, I probably would do that, like, I'm not gonna lie. Nah, I don't think I would, but like, it might just, it will kind of ruin it on you before they even watch what you can do, maybe. I'm not saying it does, for sure, so like. Yeah, I'd avoid adding loads of photos. I'd literally keep a photo at the beginning and a photo at the end. I don't even like the photo at the beginning, but like, maybe depending on the job, it's important. Like, yeah, avoid photos, it's a video, you know? So obviously if you're going out to record some dancing just for your shower room, pick a really nice background and then pick clothes that'll just like suit you, that'll pop, maybe they're colourful. It's probably going to be something that you practice, you know you're good at. So like be confident and like wear something that makes you feel good and look good as well. So that when it comes onto the screen, you're gonna be so I have never been able to hire a videographer or a filmographer. I've always used my friends, I've always just done it myself and I've taught myself how to edit, which is how I actually got into doing YouTube and doing videos. I literally learned how to edit from learning how to edit my show reel. I know it's like so intense and it's so much and like no one tells you about these things before you become a performer. But I'd say just take it little by little. Like you don't have to be like amazing at editing, but if you can like cut and like crop or zoom in or whatever but if you do have the means and you can afford to hire someone to edit do that like get in touch with me i can edit your show room for you if you really need to it is time consuming if you can do it for yourself like your cv then you can edit it and literally cater it to every or any job you want and you're in control of it so i think that's so powerful but if you're in a rush right now and you really need something to do it you can avail of my services i do editing or if you know someone else like put it into google go on fiverr fiverr is a really good website to get like cheap people who can edit where there's a will there's a way you can get this done yeah, these are things that I'm constantly adjusting and I'm constantly learning and I'm constantly looking at other people and what they're doing and going, oh my God, that looks so good. I want to do that now. So yeah, it's just one of those things that I feel like the industry is always changing, things are always evolving. So like, don't ever feel like if someone tells you this is what you should do, that that is what you should do. Like, do what you want. The things that people have told me in the past, like that I've really looked up to, that I kind of regret listening to. So be really careful. Take everything with a pinch of salt. Take this video with a pinch of salt. Like, do what feels good for you but anyway that is all for this video i hope it has helped you in some way please do let me know in the comment section below if this video has been useful or if you have any other questions or any other advice or if you've done something in your shower reel that you think is actually really good and works let me know i'd love to hear from you and um, yeah get in touch with me on instagram as well if you are enjoying these videos i love connecting with you guys and hearing from you so please do get in touch and um, yeah that is all for this video bye